it's not about the prestige, but it's about having your music make a difference in somebody's life. Multiple albums, several top 10 hits, but success, it often comes with struggle. Here, son, here, son, you know, and you know, I, I didn't know. That was a valuable lesson, man. That was a hard lesson. Crazy good conversation with R&B legend Glenn Jones now on The Pulse. This is my life. This is my career. This is my talent. So I'm going to do what I want to do. Got a lot, a lot of love to give, yeah. All right, guys, so welcome to The Pulse. And it's a special, I mean, they're all special, right? But we're celebrating Black Music Month throughout June. And so we decided to try to get some of the legends in music, some of the people whose hits you absolutely will recognize, people who have a great story. And one of those people joins us today. It is my pleasure to be joined by Mr. Glenn Jones today on The Pulse. How are you, sir? I'm great, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you doing it. I was telling you before we got started, We've Only Just Begun has been in my head. We've only just begun. The romance is not over. Ever since we went ahead and confirmed you coming on the show. You, you hear that a lot. Yeah, yeah. I, I hear that uh, a whole lot. You know, uh, the songs that uh, I've recorded over the years have lasted, you know, my, my, my mission and my purpose was always to record music that was timely, but timeless. And uh, it's uh, been able to sustain, you know, all of those years. So I always start off the show talking to people, particularly people who have done a lot of different things about how they define themselves and their career. And I look back, you, you start singing, I guess, professionally at like eight. Yeah, I, I, you know, I actually was uh, performing with a group that used to tour with all of the great gospel singers, um, you know, Shirley Caesar, the Mighty Clouds of Joy. You know, we used to be an opening act for that, and we traveled all over the country. We used to come to uh, Philadelphia. We used to play a, a venue called The Met. Uh, I think it was down at Broadway and Popular. Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, man, you know, just so it's been ever since I can remember I've been doing music. They actually redid, revamped, renovated, and reopened the Met. So the wow. next time you come back, you got to do the Met in Philly also. I would love to. Yeah. Beautiful. I, I was explaining to you that I grew up in radio. You know, I grew up in the Philadelphia WDAS days. My father used to manage. You remember uh, coming to those stations. Uh, how have things changed? Because I remember, I mean, I don't remember you specifically, but people used to come in, hang out at the station, you would sing. Has the industry changed? It has changed so much, you know. Uh, those days were great because um, it was more about, you know, uh, the music itself, you know, uh, putting, um, you know, songs into rotation, you know, because it, it was great music. You know, but a lot of the radio stuff is controlled by consultants and all that kind of stuff. So it's different. And, um, I, you know, you don't get a chance to go to a lot of stations and hang out and be on the air for 30 minutes. You know, sometimes longer than that, depending on who it was that was, you know, interviewing you. So it's changed a lot. I was doing research on your career above and beyond all the songs that I knew. Um, you know, one of the first impressions I got in looking back is you you seemed like somebody who just loved singing. Like the the industry stuff, it didn't seem like you always loved that, but you just loved singing. Is that a fair assessment? I guess because I discovered that I had that talent at such an early age and I knew what I wanted to do and knew what I wanted to be and to have, you know, you know, found myself, you know, early on to say, okay, this is what who I am, this is what I am. Uh, it, you know, it's not all about the money, you know, it's not about the prestige, but it's about, you know, meeting the fans. You know, you meet people that would tell you that certain songs that you did touched their lives, changed their lives, you know, uh, kept their families together, you know. And, you know, that's the great thing is having a purpose in the music, not just, you know, you know, doing another record to sing a song, but having your music make a difference in somebody's life. And uh, it makes me feel good to uh, to know that. You talked about touring very young and starting when you were young, but you grew up singing in church. So that yeah. was your foundation. I was a gospel singer 
And uh, I had a group, I formed a group called the Modulations from Jacksonville, Florida, because that's where I'm, I was born and raised. And I, I met Reverend James Cleveland back in the um, early 70s, early to mid 70s. And uh, he heard some music that I had written and he heard me sing. And he connected me, connected me with the record label that he was with called Savoy Records, mm -hmm. signed me to the record deal. I had a record deal when I was 17, 18 years old. That was the beginning. And I'd imagine it was cool getting started at a, a young age, but you also found out very quickly that you didn't know a whole lot about the industry. Man, I didn't know anything about the industry. I knew how to, you know, make a song. I knew how to, you know, compose a song, but the business side, I didn't know any of that because uh, I ended up having my publishing taken from me, you know, and, you know, just here, son, here, son, you know, and, you know, I, I didn't know, you know, and uh, I, uh, that was a valuable lesson, man. That was a hard lesson. Yeah, it was. I started off saying that you love the singing and that part of it came up in the church and generally defined as a, a good guy in an industry that doesn't have a whole lot of people who just say uh, who say the good guys. But I right. wonder I wonder if that hurt you. Because the industry throughout, they, they kept trying to uh, stop singing about love, sing more about yeah. sex, stop singing about, you know, it just seemed yeah. like they kept messing with you. Well, you know, uh, the thing that you have to do is not let people sway you and tell you what to do. This is my life. This is my career. This is my talent. So I'm going to do what I want to do. And I've stayed with that. And in my opinion, it's paid off for me. You know, I, I decided on who I was. And and to me, there is nothing more important than love. You know, uh, love is everything because, you know, without the love between a mother and a child, a wife and a husband, I mean, that's the, that's the key. That's the basis to everything. So I write about what I know. Touring right now. Yeah. So right. why, why still touring? Um, Cause I love it, you know. I I I, I get to meet people that um, have been with me through my career. People that know songs, you know, from my projects. One thing about going on stage, man, you know, uh, you get instant gratification. You get that love. People just pour it out. There is no better feeling than to put yourself out there and people accept you and love you and they show it, they give it up to you. There's, man, there's nothing like it. So you're still loving doing it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so what are and we still gonna- can do it. And still can do it. I want you to know that. Wait a minute, I was, I was trying, I generally, as a rule, don't ask people to sing when they come on and, and do types of interviews, because I, I don't think that's fair to put people on the spot to do that, not knowing it was gonna happen. But you're puffing your chest out a little bit. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, I, I just, you know, I want people to know that, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, they they uh, go to see artists that they follow and they love and, you know, they really get disappointed because, you know, as the years has gone by, then, you know, they, uh, it decreases, you know what I'm saying? But I, I, and I'm not taking the credit, but I'm saying, you know, it's just, just man upstairs who, who has, uh, Help me to maintain that. So if I would say something, I'd say like, we've only just begun. The romance is not over. Got a lot, a lot of love to give. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Listen, I, okay. See, so now right. I don't feel bad about challenging you to do it. Yeah. You can mess okay. around and have people never want to come back on your show again. <laughs> if you sit back and say, could you sing a couple bars for me? No, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not appropriately warmed up. Like, I, I can't do that. That ain't you. So, you know, respect. No doubt. Um, come to see your shows. What, what are we going to see? They're going to uh, find a, uh, a warm, friendly artist, an artist with a sense of humor, an artist who's uh, at home on stage. Uh, they're going to find an intimate, up close and personal kind of uh you know, situation. And they're gonna get to hear the songs that I've recorded that they, you know, they loved, you know. You actually have, you have something new out now, right? Yeah. You're doing yeah, something I, with Regina Bell. 
Yeah, I have a new album. Uh, the album is entitled Love by Design. And Regina and I, we we recorded the duet, you know, the title cut, Love by Design, which is a cre- you know incredible song, man. It's beautiful. It uh, uh, was uh, number one uh, in the uh, uh, smooth jazz uh, vocal uh, chart billboard. Uh, and uh, I did a record, uh, I did a single from that record uh, uh, with uh, Nick Coleon. My dear friend, who's uh, who's passed away, mm-hmm. uh, we did a record together called "You and Me," and I also have a record with my wife, Genovia Jeter Jones, who's an incredible singer. We did a record called "Trust in Me." You, you mentioned your wife, so I don't feel bad following up on that question. But that was like you talked about the love and all the things that mattered, um, and a couple different interviews you've done throughout the years. You've pointed out that you don't just sing that, you don't just say that, you live that. No, uh, and this is a lady who's been there with you, you know, when you had nothing and went through the the biggest of struggles. We met when I was working with her uncle. Her uncle was a legendary gospel singer named Julius Cheeks, and you know, Julius was, you know, he and Sam Cooke and all those guys. They were really close because they used to, you know, work together all the time. And I met her. Uh, we were recording a live album in D.C. Uh, with June Cheeks and. Um, she was a part of the project. She stepped up to the mic, opened up, and I'm like, okay, that's the one right there. <laughs> <laughs> Man, incredible singer, you know, a good writer, just uh, amazing talent. And a lot of records that I have done, she's been a big influence in it because, you know, she helped me structure a lot of my my lead vocals, you know, producing vocals and stuff on my records. So, uh, yeah. It seems like whenever you we kind of do these interviews, not just us, but people in general, and they talk about the situation and there's there's always some story about drama in the background. And like, it, it must feel good that none there. <laughs> there's no drama to talk about with you and your wife. Well, you know, um, I've been told that I might have had more success mm. if I had like all of this crazy drama stuff happening around me but I didn't have that you know the way I was raised you know my family I had a good family good mother and father I had I had eight uh brothers and sisters I'm I'm the youngest of nine you know and they're like my 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 seniors you know so I was like the baby boy I always had people looking out for me people protecting me people pushing me forward and encouraging me so I, I had a good life you know that's all I can say what does that say about the industry? The people were saying, if you had been more shady, more drama, if you hadn't been together with your wife, if you would <laughs> sing about, you know, random women on tour and all that kind of stuff, then you may have had a more successful career. Well, you know, it, it kind of sounds twisted, but, you know, uh, bad news always travels faster than good news. You know, I mean, people are not interested. People are into you know, the whole, uh, uh, you know, the gossip and, you know, just, uh, they want to hear, you know, the craziness, you know, and uh, I, that that's not to say that, you know, there haven't been things in my life that were challenging. You know, I've been challenged by life, you know, many times, but I think that, you know, my, my, my upbringing and my faith was the thing that kept me you know, and kept me moving forward. There are a couple of series that are out there that kind of explore, you know, people who had these big careers. Uh, and I, I think it's it's harsh to say whatever happened to, because that implies people aren't, ar- aren't around anymore. Uh, but that, right. that like unsung theme. Um, yeah. And, and you did one of those. And as I saw it, I was I was asking myself, I wonder if that's an honor or an annoyance. Well, you know, they have um, done unsung episodes with artists who were, you know, hugely successful, you know, but they they fell off because they had issues, you know, whether it was drugs or alcohol or whatever. But for me, it was a privilege because I wanted people to know my story. I want them to know where I came from, what I accomplished, and the fact that I'm still doing what I do. What's the advice you have for the next generation of people who are, are stepping into this and want to follow suit. Be true. Like they say, be, too, be true to not, thine own self, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
that's what you got to do. You got to be true to you. We try to end every show with the concept of use your voice for good. We ask people, what's the issue that matters to you? What's the thing you would like people to embrace? I have a song that I recorded with my wife called Don't Walk Away. And it speaks about that here in the United States and possibly all over the world that, you know, people are starving and dying and nobody cares, you know. But um, I want to, you know, and I have a, I have a, uh, a nonprofit called the Love Jones Foundation. Okay. And, uh, we, uh, we cater to, you know, who we uh, call the forgotten seniors because a lot of people are in that position in those places and they don't have anybody to give them love. So I go in, I take my little rhythm section and I go in and I, 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 I sing, you know, you know, from uh, Nat King Cole to, you know, Billie Holiday to Frank Sinatra to Marvin Gaye to The Temptations. But um, just, um, you know, whenever you can be, you know, whenever you can make a difference in somebody's life, whenever you can be supportive, whenever you can show love, do that. I say this all the time, but I truly enjoyed hearing the inside story, the behind the scenes thing, and how Glenn Jones has continued to be successful by just being a really good guy. I hope you enjoyed it as well. And remember that you can always hear the entire interview on podcasts, any place where podcasts are available. We'll be back to do it all again next week. And remember, whenever you can, use your voice for good and have a good one.